Yeah, <laughs> good. One of them's going off the chain right now, which is saying it's something because the boys are already off the chain. Yeah. They're off the island now. Yeah. Uh, they're <laughs> off the island. To say, to nice. say the least. That's nice. That's yeah. funny, <laughs> well, shit, I guess we get rolling here. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of More Than Tattoos. My name is Chris. This is Tim. And we have a special guest with us here tonight. Uh, we have a, a, a tattoo convention coming up here soon in the Dayton area. As Cyan Tattoo Invitational, and we got Josh Wiley here tonight. He's the one who runs and heads the whole operation, and uh, you know we want to talk a little bit about that. Try to put some of that, put that on the map. Let you guys know about it. We'd love to to help build the crowd and and push the event. Last year it was an awesome show. Uh, a lot of a lot of quality artists out. Uh, I feel like it was ran real well, you know, and I, I would like to see. Dayton have something where every year you know artists can just come throw down uh yeah so he's he's got got an awesome family he's got an awesome shop i think he does tattoo shop he's got a a hair a a hair salon with his uh, wife beauty salon beauty salon a little bit of everything yeah then you also do uh you have businesses outside of that if i'm Mm -hmm. if i'm not if i'm uh not mistaken i used to own a car lot i had i've got rid of that that's gone now yeah Okay. Different but, streams uh, of revenue. I was going to say, yeah. but now you've moved into muscle cars. Like, oh, dude, right. I've been in the cars my whole life. Yeah. Uh, I've, well, I've been building that Mustang that I've got for like seven years now. That thing's a monster. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, was, I was like, if it was nice now, I'd drive it here. Yeah. Dude, it's shitty weather. I've always right. liked cars, but I don't know <clears throat> shit about them. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I can change like, s- like belts. <laughs> I can change tires, oil, all this shit, spark plugs. But once we start talking about like alternators, Getting taken out and shit. I'm good, dog. Like I'm tapping out. Right. I used to work on my own cars way back before I had kids and all that stuff. Now I'd take my car to somebody else. I'm like, yeah. I want a professional doing this so I don't blow it up. That that's what I'm saying. Like these hands can't afford no no cuts and yeah. bruises. Because yeah. like, every time you get into an engine, pristine. you're getting like some kind of gash or you're or like yeah. uh, even changing yeah. a tire, you're gonna ram your fucking hand in the ground <laughs> getting that iron iron. It's down. always something. Or they just get gross looking and you can't get them clean enough. And then your customers see your gross hands, like your clients are looking at you like, oh, yeah. you're about yeah. to touch me with those things? Right. Yeah. Nah. Oh, that, that's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Is yeah. like, it, you know, if like one of the apprentices at the shop or like I just happen to notice like dirty nails. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, God. And they're like, yeah. let me talk to you over here for a second. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> let me get you away from everybody else quickly. Uh, <laughs> you know. I used to have a guy that worked in my studio for a little bit and he would uh, smoke and then his fingers would just be that tar color uh, yeah just you know and i was like dude we got to work on that we got to figure that out yeah like, okay, right. if you got to wear gloves use a little clip i don't know something something but you can't be coming in here all right yeah, like that yeah like, gross looking or or just really long nails yeah nails in general i've always been weird about yeah i don't know I mean, if... they harbor bacteria and yeah. you're literally touching them to a client and, right. the, and the stuff right. that con- comes in contact with the client yeah. be clean man be clean yeah i feel like uh that it, it definitely says a lot you know, if clients do notice that, even even like purple stencil shit, because that's been yeah. under my nails plenty of times. Oh and on my your face, God. Oh, yeah, you wear that stuff. <laughs> it's <laughs> like a fashion statement, <laughs> right? <laughs> really though, that stuff's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Tim, Tim, like the first like two, three years of his job, uh, every day he was because I would use that spirit stencil paper, and that's oh, like yeah. way way more dusty and yeah, just like, like flakes off real bad yeah yes. way more than like the the eco tank the epson printer that's what we right. use that's for. what you guys use now yeah and it, it doesn't really make a mess unless you touch it with your fingers but even then it's a minimal right but god dude that's <laughs> spirit paper you like it's gotten worse over the years too the Has last it? couple of years it's <sighs> so bad now every time i do a stencil like a print one off of using that paper i gotta take like masking tape or something and peel it uh, all off because uh, i'm just gonna, like a disaster. Yeah. My current apprentice, every day, I don't know how, she won't even come near the stencil stuff and she'll have purple like, <laughs> all over her face. I'm like, how'd you, you weren't even in the room? Dude, it's a nightmare. But for anyone that's listening, or if you don't know about this, I have over the years concocted a masterful uh, chemical that it's removes slightly stencil. Slightly dangerous. But, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Chemical combustible. Sh- yes. Like, okay. it, yeah. It's got, uh, <laughs> it's got potential. Let me say that. You take like, the bathroom cleaner gel with I already am not interested. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you take, I think, 70% isopropyl. And what was the last thing? It's like one one other thing. Oh, fuck. I think it might be green soap. If you combine like those things, 
it will remove stencil perfectly That's scientist like, stuff with <laughs> ease and okay. well you have to use a magic eraser though and it might take okay. drywall off oh you mean not off your skin no, oh, like on no. like because we, well, I was like, I'm already not, I'm out. Oh, you lost me on all. Oh, you just got to wash your hands for like three weeks. Get that shit off. No alcohol, uh, but so sorry for a plug. I'm sponsored by Electrum. Sure. Electrum has a stencil remover product. It's got like it smells like tea tree oil, but I don't think there's any in it. But um, I use that stuff. It's in a spray and it comes right off. It pulls stencil really? right off. Yeah, it's glorious. All stuff. skin, desks, yeah, any surface. They call it shit. stencil repositioner. Yeah, um, but it's like you can get it off everything. Um. Huh. I don't. I've never gotten. I think it I've on seen a, the videos where people like spray it and just like watch it run down the arm. Disagree. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. I love that stuff. But man, you scared the shit out of me with the. <laughs> he, he said. He said. Gel shit. He said toilet cleaner gel. I was like, no. Nope, He's cleaning it. I'm like, just don't tell me. Just, just you just handle right. it. Don't tell me what's in. The, no, right, if you're it cleaning works. like a surface. That <laughs> yeah. thing. I get. I'm, I'm on board with that. I think the biggest <laughs> mess I ever seen Tim handle or or make or deal with it was all of the above well i was gonna say putting putting the the uh, inkjet ink into the new printer we got mm-hmm. <laughs> oh like squirting the liquid in yeah like, so oh, like a nice please tell me you spilled it i did everywhere oh that's glorious and there's no tutorial for this and on top of this th- we uh we have this like nice countertop that's like made of wood it's kind of like barn-esque so it's like okay. really nice wood like out off a of log yeah, and it real all thick, drained right, on this. edge kind of thing. Dude, like, okay. Yes. And it was like real done up, nice finish on it. It spilled all over this thing. I'm sitting here cleaning it up and it like turned it purple for a second and then it turned green. Oh, what? Like turned okay. wood green. Like, what the fuck? Did How did I go from purple to green? Dude, dude that's I don't like, even what? know. What weird chemistry in nature is this shit? No idea, man. But. Oh, but the, the, there's no tutorial for that shit. Yeah, we got right. that information off of fucking London Reese. And we're like, fuck it. Like, we're going to do it, dude. Die. We're just going to do it. <laughs> Good luck to us. Yeah. And, of course, those Epson printers with, like, the ink, they got this, like, super particular, like, you press the cap into it, and it, like, will fucking push a ball up and release the ink shit. Like some high-tech weird Dude, we wasn't fucking with nothing like that. <laughs> like, we, yeah. we just, like, tried pouring it in. It was like, it's not working. <laughs> like, and then, lo and behold, we, like, tilted the printer a little bit, and it all just started running out of it. Oh, like, oh. it was just building up, not even going in the oh, tank. That's brutal. Uh, oh. Speaking of Electrum, though, uh, you use the Dermer? No. Uh, oh, please don't make me say this on podcast. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been using Sanoderm for almost a decade now. Yeah. Uh, a little, about almost as long as I've been using Electrum. Back bef- I was using Electrum before it was called Electrum. When yeah. It was used to be called Kryptonite, and he had to change huh. the name. Uh, because that's DC comic. Gotcha. And they were like, you can't use that. And he was like, okay, cool. Yeah, um, you don't want to go to battle with them. No. <laughs> right. All yeah. they did was be like, hey, man, just don't use our name. That's yeah. it. And he was like, deal. Yeah. You know, he was super cool about it. Um, but he just, you know, changed it. But right around that same time frame, I started using Sanoderm. And um, I like the product. A few people have minor issues with it. And I get that. I use the Dermer and it is a good product. It just doesn't do things the way I like it. Like it, it doesn't work the same. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm I'm very big on standing by a product by trying it, and that's why I love Electrum. Sure. But everybody's gonna have a couple of products sure. here and there that you're like, not that one for sure. me. You know. Yeah. I love their ink. Yeah. I love their ink. Yeah, that's the only product of theirs I've I've really used. I think that uh, a while back I got some of their stencil stuff, but um, I was using Dead All at the time. Oh um, yeah, Matt used to use that yeah, stuff. With yeah, with the with the spirit paper, and I mean it it worked wonderful. Then we switched to the Epson printer for stencils, and I was kind of experimenting with some different brands, and right. ended up going with this like homemade brand that we make. Dylan makes okay. it. Um, oh, yeah, he was telling me about it. Yeah, yeah, it works really well. I mean, uh, I think it comes out kind of light, at least on his. Well, his so, came out kind of light. So I used the Ghost Line printer app. Okay, um, and they have an option to increase like the the darkness of it okay so as you're printing it you just darken it and it makes it makes it heavier but there is also some some different levels and you know different batches that have done worse and some have been better uh but we've kind of got it down to where it's it's fairly tacky okay um and the stencils last i mean they just stay on the whole time nice uh, as long as you know so that's what i've been using i know that i've i've wanted to recently buy more that like uh Nico, the anchored, anchored stencil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, so there's there's still a handful that I haven't tried. And in right. a perfect world, if I could just order it, buy it, and have like for sure the same every time, what I'd like to do. But right, 
we've been using the homemade stuff. The homemade stuff. I used yeah. to use, what's funny you say that because Nico used to tell people to make their own product. He would melt speed stick in a microwave, yeah. add a little bit of green soap, a little bit of alcohol, mix it together, and that was your product. And that worked for a while. Like I was using that, and this is 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, before, you know, that sounds horrible to put on people. Yeah. Just straight up speed stick. Yeah, man. Melt in the microwave. <laughs> sounds legit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, but no, he was telling people, this is what I use. And I started using it. And I was like, man, this stuff does work pretty decent. Yeah. And then I ran into Electrum and started using their product. And I was like, this stuff's phenomenal. Yeah. Like that stuff, I'll be, I'll do an eight hour tattoo and it's still there. And I'm trying to scrub it off the tattoo, <laughs> killing my client. Like it's still sitting there. Like I need the photos. Yeah. I need this yeah. to come off. Like, hey, listen, how much would you hate alcohol. alcohol right now? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, uh, so, so, what you, uh, what do you got going on, man? What's on your plate with getting the show ready? Everything. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's, I've, I, I was trying, I was talking about running a convention for I don't know six years, seven years before I ever actually decided to do it, and then I started going to Evergreen, and Evergreen is basically how I modeled my show. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Evergreen's an amazing show. It's my favorite one. You've been there. Yeah. You, yeah. You've been with them, right? Yeah. So they have like the VIP room. They but they they cater to the artists. And it's, I'd rather it be more about the artists than say the public or the clients, which is where a villain art show caters to like drawing people in the door. They yeah. have all their side shows, all the acts to keep people busy. And, and I appreciate that. That's, they draw in a ridiculous crowd, but I like it when you're focusing on the artists because they are the show, you know, you don't want people wandering off. You want everybody paying attention to the artist. So I always swore if I ever did my own show, it'd be, that's it. Just art. We are doing a beer competition though this year. Uh, it's for charity. So I was, I kind of agreed to that. Like, eh, it's something on Saturday. It's like two hours long. Yeah. You know, it's not drawing a bunch of people away. I really don't want to do that. Well, I feel um, like it fits the vibe, you know? Yeah. Tattoos and beards. I yeah. mean, you guys both got some heavy duty beards. I saw that and I was like, man, I wish. I- I'd get destroyed by some of those dudes you had photos of. They have length, though. They have like the short, it's like one to six inches. I don't know anything oh, about shit, it. Oh, shit, for real? Yeah, it's like one to six inches and then from six to certain number and it's like length. Then there's so like the like freestyle. Yeah they, yeah, they got like different. Different everything. It's oh, crazy. Man. I'm not entering in That's any wild. of it. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is as good as it gets for me. I grew up with my great grandfather, and he always had the fucking curly, yeah. curly stash. Yeah. At one point, I thought I might try it, but Katie was like, nah. <laughs> well, dude, I, think, okay, I think it's babe. like an age thing because once you surpass like 45, maybe, you would nail that and like murder it. <laughs> yeah. It's all, I think it's also your willingness to live with it because you're going to get people looking at you like, What's with the handlebars, man? Yeah. You know, right. the French twist, or what's that called? <laughs> the French thing, what you were talking mm. about, where they curl it. I don't know what it's called. I just remember, like, the fucking stash of VO5 that we always had. <laughs> <laughs> My grandpa <laughs> lived and died by the VO5, oh, man. Oh, VO5 hot oil. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff. I remember oh, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 I can't do fancy beards anymore. I used to do, like, the cut designs and, like, the you know, and I was like, dude, that's starting to get old. I'm just, all right, I went through that phase. I'm out. Yeah. Just keep it clean. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I can't do beards like you guys. I've tried, and I'm like, oh, it's killing me. Oh, uh, dude, it's it's a pain in the ass with just like having like uh, like calyx and shit. When yeah. it gets to this point, oh, it's been driving me nuts lately. Like where just, it starts curling outward, yes. and just gets in the way of everything. Yeah, yeah, I got I got two curls right here on the on the edges that like instead of going down, they go they curl up and out. So it's like super hard to cut and trim, and always well, fucking I, gets. Wonky. I gotta say, you go to Joy, don't you? Yeah, yeah, dude, she does a great job on your beard. Thanks. Really good job. She would be beard. stoked to hear that. I think she's bummed that I haven't like shouted her out on Instagram yet. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, they, feel, I feel kind of bad about it. But, no, so, Joy, go. here's your plug. Right. There you go. <laughs> I will clip this one exact part. Beards and bows, Springfield, Ohio. There you go. Get with get with the, get with Joy. <laughs> Pin drop. You Joy are now. Atwood. You have been shouted out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's awesome. So, dude, like. You know, how did you even want to start a show? Like, how did that come about? And maybe maybe a better question is, how did you actually pull the trigger and you're like, now's the time? Honestly, so I don't like doing just one thing. Like, some people can zero in on a thing and do it extremely well, and they do that one thing, and they're laser focused, and that's it. I have, like, self-diagnosed ADHD or something where I just <laughs> need to focus on 783 things at once, or I don't feel like I'm accomplishing anything. So I was like, what else can I do that's in the tattoo industry that's not tattoos? Yeah. You know, obviously I already own a business, a tattoo studio. And then I was like, maybe a supply company. There isn't one in Dayton, but there's one in Columbus, uh, Bickney. So I was like, ah, I really want to compete with them. That's not cool. They're really close. I don't want to try something like that. Plus the inventory alone blows my mind. I don't even want to try. 
So I was like, what about like a convention? And then I started really seriously considering it when I started going to Evergreen, like I was saying, because the way they treat their people and they actually give a shit about the artists. Um, I was like, man, that, Dayton doesn't have anything like that. And then right about the same time I started thinking about it, Troy did one in Cincinnati. I was like, damn it. <laughs> You're like right down the street now. So I got to make sure I keep mine far apart. I don't want to, you know, I don't like to overlap. I don't like to mess with Derb show, Hell City. I don't like to, you know, compete like that. So it took me three or four years to finally, what actually like to answer your question, Hope Sweeney, the Youngstown show. Have you guys mm -hmm. ever been there? Yeah. First, the first year it happened, okay. I was able, I attended it. So that girl, she's amazing. I love her. Uh, she had her own show. I think she was 26 years old. I was like, fuck off. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, how do you get me 26 years old and be this kind of a badass and just pull the trigger to your, you know, like you say. And I was like, man, that's it. I can't, I got to do it. Like, if she can do it, I know I can do it. Like, come right. on. She's a badass. I should already have this shit figured out by now. So a lot of it's that, oh, no, what if I screw it up? But I was like, man, if I just have one good person involved with me and a, my partner in this, uh, he's not even a tattoo artist. But as long as I've got one good person to help balance what I'm not good at, well, it should be a great show. Yeah. And you guys were there. So, yeah. you know, I feel like it was a pretty good show. The hardest part for me was watching not that many people come in the door because it was the first year. It was a bad time, bad season. We didn't fall. I thought like that was a dumb idea. I didn't know until later. Yeah. But we figured it out. We moved yeah. it to March. And I think this year it's going to be. Well, how much, how much did COVID impact that? Because I know the first year you were going to do it was 2020, right? Yeah. And May. then COVID happened yeah, right before be May, then. And yeah, March, March was COVID. So I could imagine the amount of money and time and energy put into it that now had to be put on back hold. Dude, it was a nightmare. So I went, we, we had it all set up for the Dayton Convention Center. We were going to do 150 booths because it was a bigger show, which allows a bigger budget, you know, all that bigger event center. Um, there were a few drawbacks. The Dayton Convention Center, they charge a lot more money, but they also, they have to sell the alcohol. And alcohol brings in some of that money, uh, some of the profit. So when we didn't even have that as like one of our revenue sources, I was a little disappointed. But then COVID happened, stopped everything. And then they ended up sending us our money back. We had already paid for the venue. We had already had all this money invested. Everything was like ready. We even had advertising started. So we lost money in our advertising. Oh, shit. Because it was like two or three weeks in. We're like, yay, let's, you know, let's get this going. And then they're like, shut it all down. And I was like, no, it's all advertising. Yeah. Stop spending money. Uh, but then the convention center sent it all back. So then I had to just hold on to the money until we were allowed to do it again. And I had to allow so much time for everybody to like stop being scared of everything. You know, yeah. like I'm not going in a public crowded place. So that took like two years, two and a half years. Finally, we, I went to go set back up with the, the convention center and they more than 50% raised the price tag. It went under new management. And so here's the weird part. It was only like 11 grand to like rent for the weekend. It wasn't horrible. But then when we went back, they wanted like 15, almost 16,000 plus $65 per booth for electricity times 150 booths. And I was like, yeah, you know God what I mean? Damn. No, it was like $9,000 and some change. I did the math immediately. I was like, that's $25,000. Like, I'm like, I can't do that. That's yeah. not in the budget. It's not even an option. Right. So I started looking around for other venues. I considered the Sharonville Convention Center, but I was like, that's not Dayton. Like, that's more Cincinnati. Then I found the, the fairgrounds, which is where we did it. And I was like, I had to go look at it. And I was like, maybe we might be able to fit 85 booths in here. Maybe that's a good thing. Like maybe keeping it smaller, a little more intimate, a little more personal. I might actually remember everybody's name that shows up. And I feel like it worked out really well. Yeah. It's a really new building. Parking is free. Uh, we got to sell the alcohol. Like I said, stuff like that all worked out. Yeah. And I, that's one thing that I noticed about the show was, uh, you know, typically they're like, downtown like mm -hmm. a little busy a lot of foot traffic but i like the vibe of just kind of being its own, own out thing, the, almost out know? in the middle of nowhere yeah yeah I, and it was a like you said the building was seen brand new uh mm -hmm. it, the, you know it was a nice environment i feel like it uh it was a good spot for a show and i feel like it fits the vibe of what he was going for you right. know versus being just a lot of people yeah um there's, there's nothing wrong with bringing in a lot of people, which is what I want to do this year. I want to try to make every artist in that building is turning away clients. That's what I want. I want them so slammed that everybody's almost, a lot of people are going to be disappointed because they didn't get to get tattooed because everybody was so busy. That makes a good show for the artists. Sure. But I also want the artists to be the priority. Like our money comes from people coming to in the doors. That's where we make our, any kind of money. That's secondary. Like money's cool, 
but make sure the artists have a great show. Make sure everybody's happy. You know what I mean? The, the awards, the awards are not just a standard crap you see everywhere else. They're like, again, like evergreen, they're handmade, they're themed and they're focused on being something original pieces of art, basically. So last year's were, uh, last year's was, we were a little scared towards the end. We were like, Oh no, we don't know. We don't know how to make this thing work. So my, my partner, his name's Matt. Um, <clears throat> he was like, dude, I ended up just throwing a bunch of money at it. And I bought a bunch of geodes. <laughs> He's like, we just had to make our own and just hurry up and get it done. Cause we were like, we don't know how to make this work. But the themes, did you, I gave you, did I send you an invitation? The mm-hmm. little treasure box thing. It's had a tiny little geode in it. And then we were trying to theme the rest of the show, but we didn't know how that's where we ran into the problem. Yeah. So this year, you guys know what I'm doing yet this year? No, I don't think, I mean, I'm not entirely I know sure. The, the, like, the thing you sent as the invitation this year is you sent a card, but then you also sent like an alien snail. The snailian. Yeah. The yeah, snailian. The snailian. <laughs> that was a clue. That was definitely a clue. Uh, it's definitely xenomorph alien themed. But wait till you guys see the trophies and all that shit. They're badass. They're, I like them way more than last year's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I oh. thought the stuff from last year was awesome. Thank you. It was very original. And uh, obviously, cyan and your color scheme and everything yeah. fit so organically. Right. You know, and it looks great, you know, putting it up. Because we, we just had a conversation about uh, trophies and stuff like that. But when you put so much effort into when you receive this thing. Right. It's everything's been thought through you know what right. i mean it really means something going to you and it feels that way when we see it out of the shop it's yeah. cool yeah um yeah i was i was uh trying to drum up some some stuff cuz i wanted to compete this year but when we decided to go the podcast route you know uh which matt van falsen is trying to talk me into doing a day a day on oh, his inside shit. arm yeah so i thought about maybe tattooing friday but i don't know I told him i would talk <laughs> with you and see um, but how, how are the competitions working? Or is it kind of, kind of know hell city, like the artist, the tattoos day of can only enter in like best of day or best of show. Is it kind of similar or nope? So, well, yes and no. So if you're giving tattoo of the day, it can only be tattooed that day. So uh-huh. like, um, this is the one thing where I had a minor disagreement on the evergreen thing, which is where Josh Carlin has beautiful logic. He wants people to come in and compete for best in show. So his, his logic is you, the only way you can enter or win best in show is if you win a tattoo of the day, which means you got three options, which also limits their, their judging. But, um, I don't think personally that if somebody enters on Sunday, they entered three days worth of work as best of a day. And then the person who tattooed only on Sunday all day has stands no chance. You know what I mean? He's got eight to 10 hours. This person's got 30 wrapped up in their tattoo. I don't feel like that's very fair. At the same time, the whole logic is do a three-day piece, do more three-day pieces. You know, that's what he wants. I don't like that. So what I'm doing is I'm making it, if you enter tattoo of the day, you enter tattoo of the day. If you're going for best in show and you work for two days, you're out of the day, out of tattoo of the day options. You wait, you wait till Sunday night. Yeah. You know, so if you know, if you're coming in for a three-day thing, you better, you better bring it because your only option is tattoo of the day or best in show. Yeah. Yeah. So tattoo of the day can only be done that day, started and finished. Yeah. I kind of like that though, because it gives room for the people that want to do both things. Right. Yeah. You know I mean, and especially you're wanting to like, what your goals are is like getting people, like obviously take care of the artists, but make sure those artists feel like they're provided for with yeah, clients. Or they even and, stand a chance. Right. Cause you know, this isn't to blow smoke up your ass or nothing, man, but you're a badass black and gray artist. You're well known for it. So when people come to the show and they're not, they don't have the feeling that they are as good as you, they won't even enter. And they don't, you know, they just feel, I don't stand a chance. Dude, Chris Powell's in, in the building or Kyle Cotterman's in the building. I'm fucked. So I, that's why I have the black and gray and the color tattoo of the day. So I was like, you know, people who do color, it, um, color almost always wins against a black and gray piece because it's more, there's like so much more to look at. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I like both. So it's, and, but it's, it's hard to judge. You're like, dude, this is black and gray. And it's amazing. This is color. It's amazing. What do you do here? Yeah. And it's not fair. It's like, how do you, you know, how do you put these against each other? So I just eliminated that whole situation, made one of each, but I'm not doing places for tattoo of the day. It's one you win or you don't. That's it. And then best in show is one award. There is no first, second, third, none of that shit. You just, you better produce a badass tattoo. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Yeah. 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 It makes you work hard. I mean, or if you have no interest in awards, you're good to go either way. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. And then all the other categories are, are mostly healed stuff. 
No, it can be healed or fresh. I don't okay. as long as you get it done in time for that category that day or whatever. Yeah, nice. Um, now it'd be it'd suck if you were trying to do a badass piece on Friday and this and it starts at six. You know what I mean? You're like shit. My category's today. I got like four hours in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You might not you know get what you want to get done, but sure. What time does that best of day usually start? Uh, we're gonna so the show is Saturday, Friday and Saturday. It's noon to midnight. So it's 12 hour days. Nice. You don't have to stay obviously sure. the whole time, but if you want to enter a badass piece, you got 12 hours. Um, but we're starting the tattoo of the day at 11. So technically you get like on like 11 hours and then Which show... is still a shit ton of time for a full day. That's a, for I get, a black I get, and gray piece. That's a long ass day. Yeah. You mm-hmm. guys, well, I don't know about you. You're super ridiculously detailed. I don't know how fast you work, but for me, a black and gray piece, I could do something this big in 11 hours. Yeah. So yeah, probably wouldn't be as detailed as yours though. And then if you do any <laughs> black and gray and you have like collar and fusion in there, it's automatically in the collar category. I mean, that's one of those, you're risking it. It's tough. Yeah. yeah you're risking it. Uh, I thought about doing a color infusion category, but then it's like how much color infusion, Yeah, you know, like now you get into details. Yeah. Like if it's a black and gray tiger with blue eyes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're right. What is that? Is that, is that, inf- is that color infusion or is that? Just black and gray, and you just <laughs> ignore the damn eyes. Well, yeah. apparently, I mean, we've heard at certain conventions that that's just automatic, like no doubt, you, that's straight into color. You're referring to uh, Pertle's back piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did the same thing in this Odin back piece, and just real tiny. It couldn't have been any more than the that one, big. It wasn't even two eyes. It was one eye. <laughs> one, and he got apparently taken out of the black and gray category because there's just a little blue in this. And obviously, a whole black and gray back piece that's got a tiny bit of blue isn't going to beat a, a full color sleeve, you know, right. in uh, the color category. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I appreciate the strictness of it all because then black and gray, who people who are like hardcore, true black and gray artists, they don't even use white. They got this piece that you enter with blue and it wins. Yeah. And they're like, the blues won't want it. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. That's not fair. So I get it. Yeah. But then it sucks for you because if you got this whole big back piece, then you got another back piece that's got 97 hours of color in it. You don't stand a chance. You yeah. know? So right. I don't know. Yeah. It does feel like there should be a third category that starts to get involved because I feel like tattoos are just starting to get. It's kind of like music. I've seen a There's lot like of rap and metal, and you've got like color mixed with black yeah, and gray. country now, and yeah, right. I get you. <laughs> I've seen a lot of color infusion uh, as a recent. And especially, you know, I've been I've been kind of dipping more into it, uh, just just because I feel like you can only do so, you can only do so much with black and gray. I feel like right. you know, and at some You're point limited. you want I wanted to bring in more, just try the next level, you yeah. know, and just expand and, your career, yeah. expand your ability. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I do feel like color attracts more attention from just a general population. Mm-hmm. Um, Unless you live in L.A., I yeah. learned that lesson. Oh yeah, we, we went to Golden State, dude. I'm a color artist, yeah, and I was not just loaded down with black and gray, dude. It's and check this out. And now I don't give a shit about fashion all that much, right? So in LA, I had to ask all the other artists, like, dude, why is black and gray so popular here? And they're like, fashion. And I was like, wait, what? They said if they don't put color in their tattoos because then it clashes with what they're wearing. And I was like, I would have never thought of that ever in my lifetime. But I have thought my tattoos make my outfit look different. When it really it does, it makes sense. But I was just right. like, these people give a shit about their fashion. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I wear tank tops and shorts, dude. <laughs> how was <laughs> you know the, I mean? how was that show overall? Uh, so they don't advertise the show at all. Yeah. Uh, they have a nice following. They got like 40, 40 or fifty thousand people on their Instagram. But dude, it was dead. Like yeah. the whole weekend, I was sitting there with my thumb all the way up my ass, bored. That's what Dylan was saying. It was awful. Dylan ended up tattooing Hunter. So yeah. Like, yeah, he did a big ass, like two day piece on him. Um, but I was like, dude, you, we flew all the way out to LA for you to tattoo a guy that we worked together. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? We could have just done this at home. <laughs> yeah. Like, but you know, oh, you know, but the here's the crazy part. Uh, Richie Bull, uh, Hustle Butter, man, he had I two whole rows yeah. and then like another half of two whole rows. It was, I bet you it was. 18 or 19, 20 booths. It was insane. Everybody in those booths was a phenomenal, holy shit artist. Uh, Hip was in there. Yeah. And it was funny because he and I were chatting and he and I was like, so are you going to enter? And he's like, did you see who's here? And he, he, he was like, are you out of your mind? I'm not going to enter anything. Let me just save my ego. Yeah, like, right, let me right. just not even yeah. get excited. And it was hilarious because I was like, I went there on Friday and I tattooed Harley, my girlfriend. 
I tattooed her. I did a little four hour tattoo. I was thinking Friday's the dead day. I might stand a chance. Do we go around the stage and there's people already kind of walking up. So she goes up, she gets judged, comes back off and they got TV set up with cameras watching the, the tattoos. So you're, you know, I'm watching one of these TVs and this dude comes up with like a half sleeve of like this wizard. that I was like, dude, that's got 90 hours in it. There's no fucking way that was done today. It was done that day. And I was sitting there staring at it going, hey, we're leaving. We're, 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 done. <laughs> we're out of here. I'm not, we're not, I don't stand even a remote chance of this one. Yeah, she was like, are you serious? I was like, no, seriously. No, we're walking away. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> seriously. On a Friday amazing. too? On a Friday. Fuck. I was like, did they start at two in the morning today? Like what is, right. it was a phenomenal time. I don't even know who did it. I was just like, yeah, nope, I'm out of here. That's it for me. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to understand how people can be so fast. You know, I don't know if it, if maybe maybe they're still using coils. I know coils you can you can throw down with. You know, you get the right machine. But uh, I I've never been able to tattoo that fast. I mean, dude, you put a ridiculous amount of detail and like you care. So like, uh, one of my favorite artists I love watching because his his work is so original is Rember. You guys know Rember yeah. Orlana. So I love watching his work and he was at Evergreen one year and he did this. I mean, it was this ridiculous thigh piece and maybe it was on the that inside. That was the year I was there. I'm pretty sure. It was like this ridiculous, the dude flew in that morning, got tattooed all day and then had to jump back on a plane and flew home. And I was like, huh, I need people doing that. Like, what am I doing wrong? What, right. I want clients like that. But yeah, they weren't even allowed to judge his piece because he was, the customer wasn't there. They were like, we can't judge your iPad. Cause that's all he had was like his iPad picture Damn. of the tattoo. But I was like, dude, he had it done in like nine hours. And it was like this big, black and gray with a blue like color infusion. And I was like, how did you, how? Yeah. How? He's just phenomenal. You know what I mean? He's probably been doing it since he was four or something. I don't know. <laughs> just got to figure it out, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've never understood it, you know, but I, I definitely like to take my time. And yeah, I, I do go for the detail, but even then I feel like I see guys be super detailed and just fly through shit, you know? Uh, Robbie Latos. Yeah, and that's, oh, who dude, I was just, exactly. that's who I was thinking of yeah. in my head. You know? That dude, he's, I think I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he said he uses like mostly a three-liner for like mm. most of his God shit, like a three-liner. I mean, it kind of makes sense when you look at his shit, but yeah, because the dude will be doing a whole back piece in a day, though. Yeah. yeah. Like a whole back. Not with a what three-liner, but I mean, maybe mm. he's running at 37 volts or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I usually run mine at like eight. I was using the the flux for a long time, the yeah. FK irons, but I yeah. recently just got the two, both the new Numa fives. Okay, uh, they're not air powered anymore, are they? No. Yeah, I've heard. No. I remember. I remember when they first came out when they were all air powered, had little compressors making all that racket. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, I, and I was looking into. I think Hip got them when they were like that, and I, I was like, hell no, you no. know. Hip That's, goes through all of them, man. He tries all of the shit. Yeah, Did that one that was magnetic. You, the you ever, ink machines? The, I don't know. I just yeah. used like that sounds the, crazy. The uh, cartridges were magnetic. Yeah, it was like twenty five hundred dollars for the setup. I yeah. was like, dude, how much are those cartridges with magnets in them? Like, that's got to be expensive. Yeah, but in the holder, you could like it would memorize volts. Yeah, and oh, different things. I remember Presets, that thing. Yeah. yeah, you got like six ink cartridge or like cartridges out, and you go to pick it up, and it's like it's this one. It registers. It changes everything, and you start tattooing. Yeah, like, that's kind of genius. It's I don't ever change my voltage though. Really, I run at eleven. Same. Yeah, I keep mine the same pretty much all the time. I threw down uh, that. I don't know if you happen to see it or not, but I just did. Uh, it was an Odin. It was all black and gray with like blue and shit. It was a half sleeve. I think so, but yeah. I threw yeah. that down with the Numa 5, and it, it felt a lot like a coil using it. And okay. uh, packed packed it real good. Okay. Uh, one, pretty much one pass, the whole thing. And we did two days on it. So it was basically, it was basically like 22 hours and two days, two I days. think. Um, and I was able to get probably 90% done on the half sleeve. Just do like a follow-up, clean it up kind of thing? Well, so, and the design, I had like lower neck, shoulders down, but I just stopped it. So there's a, a chunk underneath that needs uh, done. Okay. I would imagine probably some white is going to need hit again, you know. Right. And I As feel usual. Like, yeah. And doing a long session like that, there's going to be areas that may need a little more contrast, need bumped, or yeah. put some black back into some things, but... I'm I'm hoping you know and the way it, the way it looked when we were done I'm, I feel like it should heal pretty well you know but Black we'll and see. Gray heals really well usually as long as your customer does their job and you don't kill yeah. them yeah you know which you run it at eight volts and not moving fast they're they're gonna yeah. heal yeah dude I I get a little scared with my clients because I run at eleven volts and I tattoo like I'm some kind of maniac and I, <laughs> I mean 
I would, if you guys, we've never sat and chatted before, but I usually, when we get into this conversation, I pull out my phone and I'll show you like, I did this one in eight hours. And you're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't take breaks. I don't smoke. You know what yeah. I mean? So I just tattoo until one of us dies. And then, <laughs> you know, I got to pee. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't run off. I'll be back in 10 minutes and we're going to get this done. Like it uh, shows. Oh yeah. It shows especially. But yeah, like, so I, when I picked up, started doing black and gray was five years ago, maybe. Cause I just, I didn't get it. It's weird. Most people start out black and gray and switch to color because they want it. Like you're, like you said, you're trying to expand. I went the opposite route. I started off with color and I hated the concept of black and gray. And then I was like, I want to expand, but it, is that going backwards? Well, I, I started off with color. I did color for like six years. Oh, okay. Um, and that was mostly <clears throat> what I did. And then I got into aisle nine and there was already a, a, a slew of badass color artists. And right. I seen the opening and, my, I originally started in graphite, like school and pencils okay. and stuff. So I, I you had an had, understanding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I always have liked black and gray. I just found myself doing mostly color. And right. that's what I really tried to push the most, like a neo believable style outlines, right. bold, bold stuff. Um, but yeah, then I, that's when I jumped into the, the black and gray, pretty much fully committed to it, quit taking on color. Um, so I feel like I'm pretty well versed in it. I just. Something about just pouring like forty caps, you know, or just like shaking right. thirty bottles and mixing and layering. And they and get hard on the, the top, blends. and you got to bust it open or rip the top off. Start yeah, over. yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, there was there was a, a few reasons I went to black and gray, but um, black and gray, you only got to worry about one color, just values of that one color. Yeah. So it, I guess it it makes things easier to understand. Like I said, when I started picking up doing it, I was like, man, this actually is actually fun. Yeah. You know, I don't have 382 colors to worry about or how do I blend my purple into peach? You know, like who gives a shit? Yeah. You black and gray, you do black. Yeah, you mainly just focus on smooth blends and, mm -hmm. and contrast. Yeah. You know. Value, like your value, mm -hmm. dark to light, yeah. simple. Yeah. And it's not simple, it's complicated because I was like, this is harder than color to me. But I had to like work at it and work at it and I'm still not even anywhere near your level. But I see your shit and I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, <laughs> the, the hardest the hardest part of the transition was for me was just making sure i would leave it enough skin tone with because with color you saturate everything right you know all the whole black all the way through the colors to white but with black and gray you got you want some skin tone right because i've never been a big heavy white person like i right i like to do black and gray with minimal whites you right know? like just with like three dots yeah so i like, found myself just muddying it up or right. not leaving enough of the highlight and that would just kind of wash it out and i struggled with that for a while um that was the hardest thing for me right. switching from color black and gray but so when i see black and gray i always i always have to explain some things to my customers um often is there's black and gray which is what we call it and then there's black and white and they always call it black and white they're like i want a black and white tattoo and i'm like but do you want black and white or do you want black and gray? Yeah. And then I have to go through the process of telling them the difference. Because there's the black and white, like the 50s movies, where you use a shit ton of white and opaques. And they go, no, 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 this. And it's like, oh, you want black and gray. Yeah. So, you know, that. but then, like you said, you add too much white into your piece, even though it's supposed to be black and gray, but you're trying to brush white in, like soften, like lighten their skin tones a little. Then it looks like you tried to make gray. Yeah. And it doesn't we work always, right. We always say if you use a lot of white, it's because you're just trying to save it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you just went too dark. But yeah. I feel like there's a whole movement of artists out there that are doing heavy, heavy whites in their black and gray. Like they'll go, um, like Don Brown, and if you know who that mm -hmm. is, or like Elliot, um, somewhere over in the UK. But they just go so dark with you said the Elliot. black. Elliot, uh, I can't remember his. I can't remember his full Instagram handle. You're not um, talking about Elliot Kohak, are you? No, I don't, that dude's I don't an think amazing so. black and gray artist. Maybe, well, yeah. I was I th also I think thinking about that Montero dude because he does a similar thing. Just heavy blacks, dark grays with whites. When it heals, I feel like it can heal really good, but it's always a gamble with whites. Oh yeah, it's always a like, gamble. How's their skin gonna take it? Yeah. Is it gonna yeah. turn to beige? Yeah, are they yeah. gonna hit the sun? Are they, you know, like, yeah? There's just it's too Risky. it just it's too un yeah. unpredictable, you yeah. know. Um, so I always hated just packing a shit ton of white in there and then some of it turned yellow. Like we did Tim's leg and we put a pretty good amount. I fully saturated, no skin tone, whites, but there was one part of the snake that wanted to turn yellow. I think it kind of went away, right? Or is it still? Yeah, because like I've kind of got, 
uh, I don't know. You can't really tell from my arms, but like on my legs, it I feel like I'm a little bit more tone on my legs. So it kind of made more sense the more it has settled over time because it was like. It got um, real yellow for a second. It, huh? When it was healing, because it was like, it was in that phase, I would say, for like three months, four yeah. months, even after we had finished that second two day. Um, but now it's, it's not too bad. I wish I could, like, you know, bust it out of the fucking joggers Just I got right now. Ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it went away. But yeah, you're right. For sure. At, the start, it was just in that one spot right there that it wanted to seem yeah. kind of yellow. Or like doing a lot of sleeves. I, I don't know if you, you, you've experienced, I'm sure. But doing a half sleeve or full sleeve, put a bunch of whites in there, and then it's on their left arm. They got their arm out the window or yep. you know, where their sleeve yeah. hits, so it's like kind of milky. And then under their sleeve up, it's right. like white and like shit. It should be, so yeah. it's like, I always uh, make my decision of whether or not that person can handle more white or like lighter tones a year after I tattooed them. Yeah. So like you know you get a lot of repeat clients, so you I'll, I'll like tattoo something, I'll test some some lighter stuff, and then I'll wait a year, and I'll be like I don't want to do any more light stuff onto you until one year from now because I want to see how that handles on like how you handle that, yeah. and then how see how they take care of it. A lot of people don't take care of their stuff like they should, and you know you could sit right next to them and hold their hand like a small child, and they still find a way to ruin it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know I'm real. I dude, I bet my clients hate me because I talk to them like they're four, and I'm like, <laughs> listen, you're dropping thousands of dollars in my lap take care of your shit yeah. you know something i found that uh i'm i'm i've been kind of playing with and i i tried a lot of on that uh or the zeus piece i just did um i did whitewash all the way up until whites so instead of using pure white i used uh Pooch has a world famous gray set. Okay. And the lightest, the lightest gray tone, almost white, but it's still gray, just barely. Mm -hmm. I use that as whites instead of pure white to see if it being just a little bit off would help. It Um, it does because it got that little bit of black. I've even heard like a drop of purple will kind of counteract that yellow. Okay. I've heard a drop of orange in everything in your tray. If you're doing black and gray, drop like a drop of orange Hmm. in each cap. So it's not so cool when it heals. It's more that, warm. And, and now this is third-hand information. I did zero fact-checking on this, but apparently the human eye picks up orange as one of like the most vibrant colors we see. So even if you do black and gray, but you drop a couple drops of orange in your cap, depending on your cap size, um, and then you mix it in thoroughly, it just makes your colors a little bit more vibrant and a hmm. little bit more picked up by the eye. Hmm. And I was like, it's I'm going to try that. Yeah. So every now and then I try it. Especially somebody with like super pale skin, like yeah. extra jumping back real quick. You said using like this, this, the tone right under white. Mm-hmm. Nico Hurtado has a video out. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it's like a piece right under, right under here. It's a piece of like a lot of red. It's like a girl with some makeup on. And he did this whole like um, seminar style video of it where he talks over top of it, like a narrator over mm-hmm. top. But he mentions that he never uses white until the very end. And he probably has white in his, in his needle for 45 seconds. He said he'll use the next step down. Like if it's pink, it's like the lightest pink, but it's still pink. He doesn't use white, you know, because it's more realistic and it stays stronger. So ever since I've watched that video 15 years ago, yeah. ever since, and I barely use white unless I need white. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what you were trying to say. And there. that's interesting you say that because like when I'm doing photo editing, for me, white is like blown out. It's just, right. it's just like, I mean, you always hear this, like black is the inclusion of all colors and white is the absence of all yes. colors. Right. Um, so when I'm like messing with like sharpening or even like looking at different colors in my photographs, usually white is where all details have been blown out. Like there's nothing really left in that. So it's interesting that, you know, saying that or using like the drop value of it makes it more realistic because mm-hmm. Uh, kind of what you did when I was looking at those Zeus photos, kind of like right here next to his eye where it was like super sharp, where there was hair and maybe some like wrinkles or something like that. You had used the white just in rolled like dotty areas because it just brought that sharpness. That was that out gray. Was so that? It wasn't yeah. actually white. Yeah. I used gray. It was in the, in the beard, the hair, all of it in the face. It wasn't actually white. It was oh, that. It was shit. that. Really light gray from the pooch set. Damn. Yeah. So wait, what what spots of that did you use? The white. The only place I used the white was in the lightning. You didn't even put it in his eye or anything. Just in the yeah, in the the very very pupil, like just the dot was pure white, but 
Everything yeah. else was light Damn, gray. Damn, that's wild, man. Because like right there, I would. I'll you couldn't probably, really like, tell, huh? No, this no. Is, I mean, and I, dude, that's how the eye works. You know, like what you were just saying, like the, it'll pick up certain things. So when I'm looking at that, and all around it is like those real dark tones and shit. Like yeah. you probably working with other things, just not like fucking black up in that. But in contrast to that, it seems like fucking white. Yeah. Especially when you're using a digital version, like you're using a digital thing to record your video or your picture. It's going to pick up things differently than my eyeballs or your eyeballs yeah. or like an old style camera that uses film. Things just look a little bit different. I'm sure you of all people know that. Yeah. Right. So when he's using that light gray versus a white, it's going to show up better, especially for the world to see your work. You want it to show up better. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it makes perfect yeah, sense. I am interested to see how that, I feel like it's always risky when you're mixing black gray and color because, or when you're mixing gray wash in color because wash will heal a certain way mm -hmm. and color doesn't so i you in the transitions i would take that blue and i would just dip into that light wash or the medium wash and try to get that muted that transition so it was like semi-opaques but it was mixed with gray wash versus mm -hmm. actual grays but i'm i'm i really want to see that healed because obviously fresh a lot of light tones using a small mag and stuff can go in really really dark and dense but when it heals i want to i want to see how it's up real good yeah i want to see how the transitions look yeah. and just see if that blue way overpowers the wash or not because so i was trying to be really careful and and go darker with the opaques and more saturated so i could get that because that that drives me crazy when i see someone do black and gray in color but their 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 gray wash is really soft and and you, i feel like that color is just so bold because it's saturated differently right um, that I feel like it just looks like color, man. You turn the machine up, killing the skin a little more. You're trying to drive it all in there, black and gray. Like yeah. it's real soft. You're real light on the skin, and you just go darker as you need it. Yeah, it is, man. It's because, like I said, that's that's a totally different technique in tattooing. That's why I was trying to get good at black and gray because it's so different. You got to be slower. I actually turn my machine down, which I I hate turn my machine down. But when I do like a color realistic ish piece or whatever. Dude, I'm, all of a sudden I'm going slower and I realize I'm just, man, this is way different. Different, shorter throw, you know, shorter um, depth. I mean, I'm just like, this is so different. Yeah. But fun, you yeah. know, which is why I see why you love it. I think that you just have, like, I've noticed you have more, I feel like I can be more artistically free and just kind of experiment as I go versus I feel like with color, you got to be very methodical with your layers and blends and. Not necessarily. Have a pretty, and unless you're really good at layering, but I don't <laughs> like to layer. I like to like start to finish as I go. Same, so like so like yeah. like I complete a, a whole section, then move to the next section. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do the but same. I know some some guys will just get around and go all over the place and build it up yeah. and build it up and build it up and that kills like your that client. Seems though. free, but yeah, that oh, your clients hate get, life. Yeah, for sure. Do you do an outline and then you go back through it and then try to do work on that tattoo a day two. Oh God, yeah, no! It's like <laughs> two days in a row, you do an outline, and you go back and do them yeah. all. They'll die, <laughs> and then you're, the skin's all hard. It's like swollen and pissed off. Yeah, you can't even touch them. You can't even spread the skin over. They're like, oh. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I was just thinking about this a little bit, but like, I heard something. Uh, I think it was like Hell City or something a couple of years ago. It was people talking about how black and gray doesn't win as much as color anymore. Uh, and it seems like for obvious reasons, what I was saying, it's just more for the eye to see. But also, uh, a lot of the pieces that get done are f more saturated than black and gray because mm -hmm. for a long time it was eliciting different things. And th these days, just because like, I'm on social media a lot, so and we just had a, an episode about talking about, or maybe it's Patreon being like a, like a genre whore for like art or music and stuff. Like, oh, is it realism? Is it photorealism? Or is it color? Is it black and gray infusion or whatever? But I can I feel like the work that you've been putting out more since you've been making this transition to going trying to get it full saturated, your black and gray pieces are now becoming more comparable to color pieces in a way because when you see a sleeve in color, it's like fully saturated. There's no skin tone, right? Right. But you see a sleeve in black and gray, there's a ton of skin tone. So it kind of feels Maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but well, less. you can you can fully saturate a black and a black and gray tattoo and wash, but with wash it just has like a it's like like taking the opacity and turning it down because it's like it's, translucent. Yeah, you see yeah. through yeah. it to the skin tone. So you could saturate the shit out of it, but it's still going to have that like warm skin feel to it versus opaques. 
um, or collar because collar you're like fully dying. It. It's there's you can't really tell there's so, any skin tone. For the example, maybe this will help. So like, so one of the, one of the things Matt taught me um, when I was doing a color portrait, which I don't like doing color realism as much anymore, like true hard realism, like photo realism. Um, he was saying like where even if you say you're doing a portrait on a forearm and you get to like a cheek highlight and that person's natural skin tone that you're tattooing on is the same exact color as that cheek highlight Tat tattoo it anyway, like find that color and tattoo right over their skin anyway. Um, reason being is like the logic is, is they get older, their skin tones change if they get a tan or if they go into a cave for two years and come out lighter for some reason, that cheek now looks awkward and weird. So you just want to saturate every single bit of it. Whereas with uh, um, like black and gray, that cheek highlight is using that skin tone to its advantage, no matter what, even if they do get tan, it's still the lightest part of that. So it makes perfect sense because then the whole skin area is changing yeah. rather than just that little weird cheek highlight because the ink is filling it in. Yeah. That makes sense. Then, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it just seems like when you like, I guess nowadays when I'm looking at different tattoos, I remember like, a couple of the older black and gray pieces he did when we were back at aisle nine seemed like it had more of that translucent feel versus what you're doing now. Yeah. And everything seems punchier because it's got those opaques and stuff and it is just a little bit more differentiated from skin. And right? they'll last longer that way. Right. It does make last them, longer. Make them harsher, like stronger contrast. They'll last longer. Well, and I know for sure that I, I'm not as afraid to use more black. I feel like I've oh, been using a, a lot more black and I've, Instead of being so quick to transition from black to like gray wash, I, I'll powder that black out more and then put that that gray wash over top of it in hopes that it'll help keep some of that like I don't know if rich, richness is the right word, but um, those your basically some saturation, of darkness. yeah, I mean, yeah, right. That's do you ever when you're done with your pieces like or you feel like you're almost done, do you go back with black and hit more things? You ever done that? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, but then all at the same time, it's it's kind of bit me in the ass a couple times. Uh, it's it's bit me in the ass a couple times as far as healing, you know. Um, okay, yeah, you over damage the skin a little compared to what you're used to. Okay, yeah. But with Empire, the ivory black, I feel like the ivory black is it's a good one to do that to take and just like brush over some areas and oh, okay. not have to really saturate. I try to be disciplined in like not going super dark in the beginning and then leaving those areas kind of empty till the end. But I don't like to go light to dark. I always have been a dark to light person. Yeah. You know, that's so, standard tattooing. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard for me to <clears throat> build up into the darks because I'll tattoo the blacks first. You know, I feel like that's just the so, easiest. I'm glad you say that because, again, I've never had anybody to learn from as far as black and gray goes, but I would do mediums. Like my mid tones, I would start off with those and then kind of build lighter and build darker where I needed to. But like you said, you like to go to sections complete and move on like a mm. printer. Um, Kyle Cotterman does that. I've loved watching him tattoo. Um, but like that's what I was trying to do. But with black and gray, I feel like it's harder for me because I'm not so experienced at it. But I would always do mid tones because I was like, I don't know if this is going to be too dark. I don't want to start off with black and screw myself. Yeah. So I would do mid tones and then be like, nope, needs to be darker, needs to be darker. And then I think like, I love referencing artists, you know, Yogi. Mm -hmm. So Yogi, you know, he stains his work. Like he'll, he'll go over the same area 25 times. And he, cause I did a little seminar where he was teaching and he had his girlfriend there and he was showing that Marilyn Manson portrait. That's like this big, but it took him like 11 hours. Cause he just super slow. He runs his machines at like four volts and he'll just brush over something, get it to kind of the color. And then he'll move to somewhere else, come back, hit it again. Now I want that little bit more purple. Now I want a little bit darker. You know what I'm saying? He'll hit the same area like 25 times, That's but it's crazy. not, it's not damaging the skin because it's running so soft. Yeah. And I was like, I would never want to do that. Yeah. It you sounds, I mean? it sounds painful. Yeah. Pain you, the discipline there. Yeah, it's <laughs> the whole tattoo. She was there and it saw it in person. It was like this big, the whole thing. Man. He said it took 11 hours. I was like, fuck my life. Yeah. <laughs> like for me as the artist, no way in hell would I be able to just tolerate that. And then for her, I feel bad. You know, yeah. unless she's just good at laying down, she watches some TV or something. I don't know, but right, eleven yeah, hours. I'm like, sounds miserable. You, you'd have like a thousand hours in your body if you tried to go big. Yeah, having him work on oh, you. Oh right. But his right. pieces are amazing. They look fantastic. But it's like, dude, yeah, torture. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how I've always heard with him. He's like talking about buying those like shitty like Amazon machines and stuff. Oh yeah. Like how do you how do you even do that? 
Which who's who? He would he would buy like forty dollar Amazon machines and just Yogi? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't don't like sponsorships. He don't like where the industry's going. And yeah, he a while back he made a rant video like you guys have pushed and pushed to grow the industry and now you guys are asking for help. Well fuck you, you know. Like, <laughs> okay. I, he's old school man. Oh yeah. Like yeah, he's, he's, he's like, shit, if there's regulation, I'll go underground. You guys won't hear from me and I'll be good, kind of thing. He's like, fuck you guys. You know, you ain't <laughs> getting my help. Be. You know, <laughs> oh, right, dude, he's yeah. got clients for life. He's in yeah. no trouble. Right. Yeah. Plus, I mean his work's just phenomenal. So Yeah. That's fantastic. He's hundred percent right. Uh, when I was at the Evergreen Educational, the one that we did in Orlando, I took Hip and Zach, and that was right before the whole Al Nine transition thing. And we all went down there, and I mean, we learned from Liz Cook, Teresa Sharp, uh, Lefty Colbert, um, Yogi, Dave Tevenall. Like these were like, damn, I'm just like holy shit, I'm in the presence of gods right now. Like these people are all ridiculous. And I remember learning one of the most I learned was for Yogi, and then Josh Carlton. Um, and then they had a, a guy named David Gluck. He's a painter and he's teaching oil painting. And the whole time I'm like, don't give a fuck <laughs> about your oil painting, man. I David Gluck is hilarious. I love anything that dude writes. I'm like, I want to be involved because he's hilarious. I love the guy and he's a badass painter. But I'm like, I don't paint. And even if I did, I wouldn't use oil. You know what I mean? So this right. is a waste of my life right here. I was like, can I go on break? Well, you know, felt like right. a dick. But. There's an artist uh, that <laughs> Taya really loves. I don't know, you know, I don't know if you know Taya or not. But oh she, yeah, dude, she got. I love watching her work. She's a badass. But that tattoo she got recently from by Deanna, that, Oh, that's what I was about to bring up. Yeah, uh, she does a lot of color, and and she's got a painting background. Uh, uh, I'm guessing a really good. She was really good at oil painting, but she she uses a lot of those techniques in her tattooing with. Mm -hmm undertones and muting colors with different colors and uh you know so it sounds like there there could be a lot to it but i'm not a painter i've tried on multiple occasions to like put myself through the process and and be disciplined and i i just can't finish anything it just takes so long were you doing acrylic or oil oil if you do acrylic it's a little different yeah um I've i tried only... acrylic in the past with like schooling back in like my late high school days. Right. But recently I, I picked up oil and was trying that. So I tried oil one day. I gave, I gave myself one day and I was like, never again will I touch oil. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. I'll probably try it again when I get a little older and I tattoo a little less. So I'll be bored. Yeah. But dude, oils, it stays wet. Yeah. And you're just smearing shit around. Oh yeah. Ugh. The blending is so fucking hard with oil. I, I painted mean, a handful of times with oil and it just... It uh, you have to have patience, I think, with it. Like, the, yeah. like not even just because that sounds. You guys do tattoos. Clearly, you're patient, motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, you know? but it's, those people seem like they're just patience is on a new fucking level. Six months to finish a painting, right? Oh, if dude, shoot me. Yeah, and dude. then it's like, is it even worth it? Because with the with my tattoo price point and my hourly, you know how much I'd have to charge for a painting if I spent sixty hours on it for it to like actually make sense financially, right? Uh, and I just don't have the passion to just do it for fun. Yeah, as I was gonna say, you're thinking more commission based, like you know, hey man, I want you to do this painting of my mom on my wall when it's this big, and you're going yeah. thirty five thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you got that kind of money laying around? <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know, man. I just it's. I think painting is more of a a fun hobby passion that's tattoo relatable. So I haven't painted anything in I mean sh six seven years. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I just don't have the time. Yeah. And I don't, I, I dread the idea of starting and then not being able to finish it that day. Yeah. Like if I can't finish, start it and finish in six or seven hours, I'm not doing it. Yeah. That's why I hate oil. Tattooing is definitely my favorite medium because you can put it there and it's there. And it's life. The yeah. reaction, man, listen, we can touch on this. This is, this is glorious. So I love, I love being motivated by a thing. A lot of that, a lot of the time it's money. I love being motivated by money. I'm very open about that. But the money to me in tattooing is secondary to the client being so ridiculously happy with what they get. I've never seen anything. There's nothing in this world that I've seen where people can do it as a career and get that, yeah. that joy. You know what I mean? I don't know. I definitely think it, it's tattooing is different. There is not really much that compares to it. Honestly, right. you know, people ask me all the time, like, what would I do if I've not gotten a tattoo? And it's like, well, fuck dude. I've never even thought about it. I don't know. <laughs> I've never it hurts yeah. your brain to think that. <laughs> like, like, even just me, because I'm not a tattooer. I just do video and stuff. 
But tattooing changed my whole fucking world. You know what I mean? Right. Like flipped it all the way upside down because like, dude, I came from like factory background, like working at fucking Imar and shit. I <laughs> never once had to give a fuck about other people right. or myself even, you know, <clears throat> until I stepped into this new reality and I was like, oh shit, I actually kind of give a shit about people. Right. Uh, well, oh shit, I'm, I'm people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. That's it, funny. It's just crazy how, uh, you know, you hear all the time, like, tattooing saved my life, but, uh, dude, you're not fucking lying. It's weird. It's weird. Like, okay, so my partner in science, his name is Matt Cavallero, and I started- I met him. Yeah, right? he's Evergreen? a good dude, man. Yeah. One of the most ridiculously great people I've ever met in my life, honest to God. Um, and this guy, I'm going to talk about for two seconds. One of my favorite things is when Hip worked at the shop. And Hip would talk about how he used to shoot up toilet water and shit. Because you know how he is. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that story for sure. Matt's eyes got so big when he heard that. He's like, what? And then we would talk. Because I've done a little, a few mistakes, made a few mistakes in my life, broke a few rules. And Hip and I would have these conversations of the dumb shit we've done. And Matt's like, I got a speeding ticket once. You know what I mean? Like he's that, he's, he's that guy. He's a super nice, friendly, frat boy. Like, did college. He runs a big section of his hospital now. He's like... Yeah, I love the dude, but I'm just like, dude, you live such a great life. You don't know what it's like to come from garbage. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know where you guys are from or your backgrounds, but growing up poor as shit, and then you get into this crazy world. Like, this house that you live in is amazing. Thank you. It's a great, it's a glorious house. And I was actually on track to buy one very similar until interest rates hit 8%. And I was like, I'm going to wait a little while. Yeah, <laughs> you know mine, I mean? mine's close to that. It's not <laughs> oh. quite there, but... Uh, a little brutal. over six, you know, but yeah. we've been waiting 10 years. It's like, fuck it. I'll just ref. And, and I was going to hold off until I talked to my uncle Buster. He's got a lot of problems. He's like, fuck it, dude. Just refinance in a couple years. Yeah. And I was like, okay, if you say it like that, right? whatever, you know. But when I think about upgrades, when I think about putting money, like I would love to redo the front sidewalk and have my one of my best friends growing up was a uh, stonemason. Oh, I like wow. to do the the front walk and the driveway like an and like a stone yeah. feel and like there's projects I want to do, but I'm like, fuck, I'm pretty much going to have this house forever. Like there's no point in me ever retrying to resell it. Cause I would, which I guess, you know, losing money is the same as renting, you know, but yeah. Well, no, no matter what you do right now, if you refight in a couple of years, if you do any improvements to this house, it'll gain value. Oh. This is one of those things you buy. It appreciates no matter what. Yeah. Um, you could buy a shitbox $20,000 house, do anything to it. And you got a $40,000 house. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so, like making money. Yeah, yeah, well, I know it also has a lot to do with the neighborhood, too, and, and uh, a lot of the neighbors, the houses are probably the same, but I don't really see them upgrading much, so I don't know. But there's definitely shit I want to do to it, but right. it's... Uh, it's When did it's, you guys get this place? Like, eight months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah you said pretty, six, because you said 6%, I was like, damn, you got yeah. that recent. Yeah. Yeah, we. I got approved, I don't know what you spent, you don't have to give your business. I got approved for a $350,000 loan, and I was like, my head exploded. Yeah. I was like, nuh uh Dude, I, I grew up in a $13,000 house. My mom yeah. paid thirteen grand for this piece of shit. Lived in it for, you know, my whole life. And then, and then now I'm talking to somebody and he's like, yeah, we got you in for $350,000. And I was like, yeah, that much money exists? You know what I mean? Like, right. uh-uh. You want my Elon Musk right now? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, your head just goes crazy thinking it's even possible. Yeah. So. Well, just just for maybe some of the tattooers listening, you know, just to not, obviously not to to brag or but to really build uh, confidence or, you know, a vi- dream, you know. Help- Possibilities. Yeah, that's yeah. a great, great term for it. Uh, it's a $475,000 home. Nice, man. Um, being a tattoo artist and only recently within the past couple of years getting off the pirate ship, which was honestly the best decision I've made because it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me. When you, you say know, pirate ship, you mean like claiming taxes, doing things yeah, legit? Yeah, like okay. actually operating is a legit business. And yeah. That's what opens Be- you up to get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being able to invest and four hundred one k and have have mm-hmm. secondary bank accounts that have you know good APRs and being able to not try to live under the radar because right. when you live under the radar, you're capped. Yeah, you know, and you can't unless you, you just pay for everything in cash. But you can't buy this in cash. Well, and, you're gonna be like, where'd you get that kind of right, money? And right. you can't buy anything that will make you money. It's you yeah. only be able you're only able to buy unless you're like buying and flipping cars and maybe yeah. some stuff like that. But even know. then you, if you, cause I, I was half owner of a car lot for like a year, year and a half. And that's a whole different world because they're strict with that Are stuff. They? they watch you, man. Like you pay a certain dollar amount for a car. You, 
it's it, i'm not gonna get in details it's, sure. it'll drag out but um they're super on top of that and you can't just run through that like because i was trying i was like you know hey man what do i what can i claim i sold this for that the government won't say anything he's like what'd you sell it for and i was like 7500 he goes 75 7500 <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's like you're gonna get me in trouble and i was well, like oh, all right <laughs> even just even just the mindset behind it you're trying to like okay, just like looking over your shoulders right. i don't want to make too much money i want to raise flags i don't want to Maybe I shouldn't, you know, I feel like that is just a limiter, you know, versus just playing the game. And it's dangerous. Like you, you get yourself in all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Yes. If you just play the game, you pay your taxes, just like any other successful business owner is doing. There's loopholes. There's there's ways to use your money to, you know what I'm saying, uh, to, to help lighten the tax burden. But if I'm living the life I'm living and someone's got a nine to five and they're working their ass off and they don't have an option. Right. Why, you know, who am I to try to cut, you know, like, let me, let me play all out and, and right. be legit. And- I look at taxes in a different way. Um, taxes, um, everything that I, it's crazy. I don't know what you, what you do, but you run your own studio. You, you know, you have a dollar amount every month that you have to pay out. <clears throat> Most people don't like that part. I enjoy paying out everything I pay every month. And that's uh, me and Harley and I were talking. We're at like, I think my level right now is like 15 grand. It goes out every month. For all the studio, all the shit, the new Corvette I bought, all that stuff. It's like 15 grand. And she gets stressed. You know, she'd be like, ah, that sounds like so much money. And I'm like, but we we make that much money, so it's okay. And I enjoy it. Like, I am capable of doing this rather than panicking every month. You know, like the people who try not to turn in all their money and they're trying to be like, the government can't have this little 50 bucks. It's like, dude, if you pay... The, the $20 out of that 50 to the government that they need, you'll get some of it back eventually, but it's an investment in your own future. Yeah. You know, rather than you worrying about making more than 30 grand a year because the government's going to take away your free health care, yeah. you can make 250 grand a year, cover your own health care with no problem, and live a happier life and not have to be stressed. Yeah. Like it's worth it. Just put in the effort. Yeah. I love that perspective shift. It's like just being stoked that you can do it. Yeah. Like I'm capable of doing this. That's yeah. like, that's huge, man. It's, it's also scary. Um, $15,000 is a lot of money to a lot of people. And I have absolute respect for that amount of money. I don't sit here and go, man, I need shit. You know, it's a lot of shit. Yeah. Like I need to make sure that money exists. Cause yeah. I have children. I have, you know, a life, but it, as long as you are not stressing out, like, man, fuck, I've got to fucking pay this again and write all these bills. God damn. Yeah. I'm over here like, hell yeah. I just paid another credit card. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the point in getting to that point if you're just going to be upset and stressed about it, right? Yeah, like, exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, and being able to handle money like that and be uh, <clears throat> responsible <throat> and, and take care of your shit, you need to go to the bank and get a loan. Boom, here's 50K. You know, yeah, here's, they don't even bat an eye. Because you, know, you were doing everything right. Yeah, exactly. Man, I, I think I got like almost $75,000 of credit I could use if I wanted to, yep. you know, just from being you're ever in a pinch and, or you yeah. wanted to go in a new, in a new venture, new, yeah. do something amazing. Yep. You got 75, 75 grand sitting there just waiting yep. on you. Yep. Um, and I believe that's tax free. You know, a lot of times if you have 75 in the bank and you take out a loan for 75, you, you have that as leverage. You borrow the money, you use the money, mm-hmm. you know, create a business plan that's going to, give you an ROI back that's higher than the the interest rate, you know, and voila, you know, now you got tax free money that you use for your business. I'm I, I'm pretty sure I'm speaking on that correctly. I haven't got into that yet, but it's things that I'm trying to gear up for and right. prepare for, you know. Tax free so you would want to take that seventy this is just something I've heard again, I'm not an expert, don't even try to quote me. Uh I think you're supposed to take that money and purchase like a life insurance policy and then you can draw out of that life insurance policy because you put seventy five in it. Yeah. And then that's tax free. Gotcha. Yeah. There's like a bunch of nifty little tricks. Yeah. Bunch people, of loopholes that are there right. for the game. It's part of the game. Yeah. People always yeah. say things like, well, you know, Trump or whoever the hell all these, you know, people are, they're evading taxes. No, they're not. They just have the money to invest, to hire people, to make sure they're doing the taxes the right yeah. way. They get away with using the laws that exist already yeah. to their benefit. Yeah. Like you guys created these rules. I'm just using them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You just got to get there. Yeah, I, I enjoy talking about money, but I know that for a lot of people, it's a trigger. Oh yeah, man, we made a I mean, you know I don't I we've talked about it a few times, so I don't even necessarily. Want I haven't to, gotten but... to see all of the episodes of you guys' show. I was trying to catch up before I came here to help or like to do this. There's a lot, yeah. <laughs> even though there's like twelve episodes, there's a lot of a lot of time. In yeah, there. dude, it's like <laughs> it's know? close to like fifteen, sixteen hours of content. Yeah, which is crazy to think about, but uh, 
I can you, even you're imagine talking about the that worst. post, right? Yeah, the post. We just made a, a, a money on how much a sleeve costs. I saw that, and, and dude, people were flipping out. Hey, yeah. wire, you know. Um, but I, I think you know when I how I grew up, my dad was like, "Don't fucking talk about money. Don't ask anyone what they make. Don't ask how much they got." That's old. You know school. what I'm saying? And like that was always. Kind of, and I feel like a lot of people relate to that. Yeah. Um, but it's ingrained. I, it's built into you now because yes. that's the way everybody who has been. Yeah. You're not supposed to ask your coworker what they make. Yeah. Like bullshit. But a lot of people that you know? I know that have that mindset just don't have the money. You yeah. know, so I think there's something to that versus being able to talk about it, being comfortable around it, being able to have conversations around right. it and, and feel okay. I think that that being in that state of mind will allow money to kind of, I, Ryan Roy talks about money being like energy. It's yeah. positive and negative. But it's you also it flows a tool. To or flows away, you know? Yeah. Um, money is a tool. Like a lot of people look at it as this, thing on a pedestal like you know it's this i have to attain this goal it's like dude once once money once you've worked hard enough and you start flowing through it like you were just saying when you roll through a certain amount of month money every month i remember when 20 dollars was like damn i got 20 bucks yeah now you throw 100 bucks away and you're just like damn where did 100 bucks go and eh, whatever doordash yeah that's right, what i'm saying right. you know like <laughs> beat two people on doordash for 100 bucks <laughs> and it's not like a cockiness it's just like I've moved on from that. And now you got to still respect it though. Sure. Cause that hundred bucks could feed a family for yeah. a month. You know, if, yeah. you, if it was stressed enough, but you have to like, I spend that hundred bucks in the effort of realizing, you know, this money, I don't know. I, I might not be wording it properly, but yeah, I definitely get where you're coming from though. Yeah. Man. Um, and not being scared of it and not being cocky. Yeah. You know, not I running would... around like, Oh, I've spent this much. Oh, I'm yeah. awesome. No man. Right. It's like, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. Like, I've worked my ass off to get here, but then I get here and I go, nah, uh this ain't real. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's scary. Well, it's wild when you have that mentality that you were just sharing with, like, you know, where you came <laughs> from. It's just for me, when I hear that, like, you know, don't talk about it, don't ask about it, whatnot. It's like, well, you're cutting out, like, a huge portion of questions you could be asking um, to people that you could be getting answers from, personally. Because, dude, when I, one big thing about coming into the world and working with you was, like, I didn't ask shit. I didn't ask questions to anybody. I, like... You, you hear this phrase a lot, stay in your lane, and it's mm -hmm. kind of a good, I think in some ways it has like a positive Man, um, fuck that, change idea lanes. to it. But dude, <laughs> when you're in your lane so fucking much that you don't even have a lane. Yeah, you're on the you shoulder know, of the curb now. Yeah. For real, and that's <laughs> where I was. <laughs> your lane's the bike lane over <laughs> yeah, here. Dude. Trying to stay, dude, don't, don't hit me. <laughs> right, dude, and that's exactly where I was. Uh, I didn't ask any questions of anything. I just like fucking turbo taxed my shit. You know, I didn't even think. That doing something more uh, could be a result of asking some good questions. And yeah. that's where I came from. It's like, just, dude, that's fucking disrespectful. You know, that's yeah. that's a lack of morals on your part because you're curious about what other people got in their pockets when you should be worried about what you got in your own. But it's like, well, I am worried I about, am worried about yeah. what it is. <laughs> exactly. I am worried about what I got in my pockets. So how did you get so much, you know? Right. Yeah. But if you never ask that question, you're never going to find out. Right. And right. I found that people who talk about it the most with, with people, yeah, at least from my point of view, when I talk to people about money, it's because, like, I want to see you make more money, too. Like, I, Let's I'm, do this I, shit together. I'm living yes. this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm benefiting from the fruit of my labor. Like, I want to see you prosper. So let me, let me try to open the door to this conversation and get you more comfortable. Yeah, you know, that's right. kind of that's kind of my thought process behind a lot of those questions when I when I do talk to people about it. But most people are just uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> there's sure. there's a lot of ego in money because it in a lot of ways I think people define themselves by what they have, what they eat, what they can afford to have, the what they can they afford drive. to eat, the car they drive. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the determining factors for a lot of people's like values. And like, and that all goes into that question or that conversation they have with people, right? Uh, it's like, how much can I provide to this conversation? Because someone else is talking about money and I don't clearly have as much value as they have in terms of the dollar. Um, but that's not even how that fucking works. You right. know, you, you're not worth less because you don't have as much. You're just probably not asking some questions that you could be asking. And you know? when you keep your mouth shut and you don't ask questions, you're depriving yourself of your own potential well they like, say right. closed mouths don't get fed that's right kind of thing you know? Spring, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know no man ask the questions i tell everybody like a lot of there's a lot of artists um i don't want to call them gatekeepers because that's not fair that's not i don't think that's a fair term but like there's artists who don't want to give all the information away yeah. they want to if you, if you want to hear if you want to learn from me pay me money 
because they value their own knowledge. I'm the opposite of that. If you ask me a question, I'll tell you all the answers. I'll show you. I'll teach you right there on the spot for free because I don't want to be a gatekeeper. All the stuff I've gotten in my life is from asking questions and people answering them to me without me having to pay them. Um, unless I did an educational or a seminar or something, which is different. Yeah. But like, you know, if I sit down next to Kyle Carterman and I go, hey man, how'd you do that? And he answers me, dude, that's gold to me. And then you taught me that. Now somebody else asks me, I'm going to teach them that. It's not, you know, I'm not going to be like, man, you want to learn? You got to pay me that thousand dollar seminar fee. Um, so, you know. So where do you yeah. think seminars fit in with you, with that and that moral perspective? Because obviously I think that you've learned a lot from going to like different seminars and shit, right? Yeah. So where does that sit with you? I think seminars are amazing because there's a lot of artists who can't, they're uh, maybe introverts, little things like that where they can't just go walk up to some random Dude, if I was at a convention and Nico Hurtado sitting there tattooing, I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm going to shut the fuck up <laughs> because, dude, he probably just gets bombed everywhere he goes. And I'm, I already know I'm not going to be like, hey, man, how'd you do that? He's going to be like, oh, fuck. For the 40th time today, I mean, you know what I mean? That's not fair to him. But like, so if he puts on a seminar, I'm going. Yeah. You know, I want to learn from that dude. You did a seminar and I was so disappointed I wanted to go. I was like, I can't. Like, I, I, it was too short notice for me. And sure. I was like, I wanted to be there because I do want to learn black and gray better. So it was like seminars are amazing, but then you have your circle of people. If I just stopped in your shop one day and you're working on a piece and I'm like, poke my head over, hey man, what are you doing? And I'm like, dude, how the fuck did you get that light source? Like, how'd you do that? Did you create this image? And you start answering me, dude, that's amazing. Like that's, that's what I, what I hope for. Yeah. Yeah. But then you've got some people I've done this where I'll walk up and they'll see me and realize I'm a tattooer and they go, and they start yeah. hiding. Mm. They'll put themselves in front of their piece and be like, don't fucking watch me, man. Yeah. You know, and sorry yeah, if I'm outside shit, of the microphone. That shit's but, weird to me. Yeah. But um, you know, that's, I get it because they probably, they probably spent all their life scraping that knowledge out of people. And it's like, dude, this knowledge is so valuable to me. I ain't giving it to you for free. And I get the logic. I just don't feel the same way. Yeah. So, you know, I would do a seminar for somebody. I would charge money. Yeah. You know, my knowledge is valuable. Well, and if you feel it's valuable, pay me money. I think there's levels to it, you know, and like what you're saying, if I if like Tyler Bowling, you know, he's yeah. he's watched me for <clears throat> hours on end, but it wasn't necessarily me taking on like a mentorship kind of role. It was me answering some questions and then him just watching. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah, dude, hang out. Yeah. I get to work on my piece. I'm still, you know, but if I'm now taking said time to walk you through a long process to really analyze your situation and and make tweaks to your process to help you develop systems really slowing down to pour in versus just a couple questions right i think that's where that that dollar starts to come in and then obviously mentors long term like apprenticing and right. long term like stuff long long term stuff like that you're yeah. really pouring in over periods of time you know so there's definitely levels to it but but yeah i i definitely treat others how I want to be treated. And if I walk up to someone who's fucking killing it and I got a question, like I hope they would answer it. Right. And, and in that situation for sure. Uh, you know, even with content on social media, like put out free, free, the Gary's V is like the fucking king Gary of v. free content, but yeah. he's not necessarily catering to you specific. Now, if you went to him to get more in depth on one specific, cause like a piece of content is like an umbrella turn, like, it yeah. can be applied to many different things. And how you, you have interpret to take, it. Take bits right. and pieces, apply this to here. That. But if he was to really like, okay, stop, tell me about your situation. Right. And now dive into and, and make specific tweaks. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he's going to be like, okay, here's my fucking hourly rate. Yeah. Here's how much time we can spend. Pay pay me for what I'm real. Yeah. I'm because I'm directly affecting situations you have. And going my knowledge on. is valuable mm -hmm. to that level. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking so. of, I'm going to jump subjects kind of. Yeah, man. Do you know Jesse Smith? Yeah. Dude is insanely amazing. I've been watching that guy since I can remember tattooing. I got to see him at Evergreen one year, and um, I've always wanted to get tattooed by him, but I don't think I have enough room for him to be comfortable because like, I got a bunch of shitty work on me, and I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't ask him to do a cover-up. Anyway, I walk up to him. He's tattooing, and he looks up. He sees me, knows I'm a tattooer, and he goes, hey, man, what's going on? And I was immediately like, yes, this dude's not a dick. You know what I mean? It was so great. And I, so I talked to him for a few seconds, um, but I tried not to interrupt because he was tattooing. And then he put his machine down to take a break. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe he actually wants to talk to me. So I said, man, I, I love your shit. I just, you know, I don't want to fanboy out or nothing crazy, but I loved your shit for forever. 
And it just amazes me how you can get that stuff out of your head onto skin. So it's like two different levels of talent. Getting it from here into reality, then from reality to skin takes two different things. And he responds with, man, uh, you should see what I can't get out of my head. And I went, oh, shit. Fuck. I never even, I never even thought of that. Because like, his shit's so crazy. And like, how did you even come up with that? And then the shit that he can't get from here to here, I'm like, oh, God, this dude's in another dimension. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap. That level of insane creativity blows my mind. Yeah, then that's that's a big struggle for me is like the really being real. Like if you give me a general concept, I can run with it. But trying to muster up concepts from my own, that that's tough for me. Yeah. Unless I'm fine. If I find a good reference, now I can run with it. Or if I find a right. piece that I can take and manipulate or add to or build off of, boom. But if like I got to sit down, scratch and write out a full theme, it's it's tough, you know. It is. And being original is hard, man. Like the world Especially, we live in this day, uh, yeah, the internet, right, right. even AI. Like, cause I, I, I don't know if you use it, but I use AI. I try to, you know, I try not to use anything that I can tell is like created by another artist. I try to use things that like an animal or a human face is involved, you know, stuff like that. But using the AI is even hard to be original because in your head, you're like, well, I got to give this thing prompts. How do I give it prompts that don't already exist in shit? You know, right. like woman's face covered in honey. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. whatever. Right. like that's been done. How do you be original? Yeah. It's and it's so hard. funny because there's even, we were just talking about this the other day. There's an additional layer to AI where it's like this new, new age, like Pinterest AI shit. So it's like, right. you can tell it's been AI, but the person that's using it for their reference or their design didn't AI it themselves. It's AI that they got off of Pinterest. So it's oh, like right. the second hand AI shit, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, um, I've seen a lot of that actually. Yeah, it's really frustrating because I got clients that bring that to me now. They'll be like, "I want this Alice in Wonderland piece," and it's this AI created collage of Alice in Wonderland shit with a flower, you know, or five. That's, and I'm just like, "That's a disaster!" Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, I see, I get that you think it's cool and creative, but tattooing this is not going to happen. Yeah, like maybe print it and put it in a picture frame or something. Yeah, like, let's right. make a poster that's 18 feet tall. That's what you're going to need to get this into. Just send it my way. I'll do the print. Yeah, there, you go. there you go. Yeah, and, but man, I love that tattooing is so creative and original, but it's so hard to be unique. It yeah. really is. Um, like yeah. with yours, you do a lot of like realism style. So you, or maybe a lot of surrealism. I don't know what you would classify it as. I hmm. feel like it kind of bounces back and forth. You know, we, that's kind of what we what we've talked about a lot. Um, yeah, but I, you know, a lot of times I'll take a realistic photo, but then I'll do other shit to it that kind of takes it into that surrealism realm. Like doing yeah. a skull, like in the the cosmos kind of deal. Yeah. So it's yeah. like clearly, I can tell this is a skull, but it's got like stars and yeah. galaxies and shit. Clearly, you don't see that in reality, but I can see what it is. Yeah, right. That would be surrealism putting things into categories is hard, but it's, it's hard some, for me too. sometimes it's kind of necessary because you want to educate your client to yeah. what are you asking me for? Right. Yeah. You know, do you want a photo of your grandma that you have hanging on your wall and you want that tattoo on your leg? I can do that. Or do you want to take grandma's face and put it next to a bear? You know what I'm saying? That's eating a rabbit or some shit, you yeah, know, like right. something that doesn't exist in real life, but looks like it could. Yeah. Like you say with the cosmos and a skull, you don't see skulls just with sky behind it. You know, <laughs> right, but right. I can make that happen for you. Yeah. But it looks cool. Right. And, and see, for me, cat, even even when I was just sitting here explaining it to you, I'm like, I think I'm explaining this right. <laughs> right. But but Tim, he's the genre whore, like you mentioned earlier. Right. right. So for him, he's like, Well, what would you consider? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just he's like, I cool. just like, do yeah, it. I don't know. It's, I do. it's cool shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's and I, I appreciate tattoos for that, you know, right? because I think I do. We we just talked about this not too long too. Is like we're getting this whole like influx of uh, students and stuff. Like actual art students have been in school and shit for oh, a yeah, long like time. Educated art students, yes. Yeah, yeah. And they're starting to put like their own actual like I guess call it the real spin on tattoos. I feel like a lot of old heads would be mad at me even saying that because like they've got their ways they've been doing for a long right. time and they've been doing right. Uh, you know, you know how long I've been tattooing. We haven't asked you that yet. How long? 25 years. Fuck Since yeah. Since 1999. Congrats, man. That's the... So I would be classified four as an old years, Four years longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Right. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, I just dated myself. But, <laughs> right. 
No, but uh, I say that because you said old heads. And I was like, technically, I would be classified as one, right. but I don't think like that at all. Yeah. I'm not like the yogi and the fucking... Yeah. Right. I'm not into There's that. extremes, right? Yeah. yeah definitely I think it's extremes. cool that you're like in the... Like kind of in between. You, you I'm got a always bit of... learning and I like improving. I like seeing new perspectives. So I'm not into that whole, it's got to be this way because I said so. Yeah. I was taught this way. That's the way life is now. No, fuck yeah. that, dude. It's been 25 years. Yeah. Been, thanks, we're in a change. whole new level of world. Yeah. Oh, we had the hour and a half already. Yeah, we did. Man, time Man, that's flies, crazy. Bro. Yeah, good ass talk. I didn't time touch flies. any. I had some notes written down. I wanted to touch on. I didn't touch on any of that <laughs> shit. shit. Man, yeah, man. that's why I called Tim earlier. I was like, man, uh, I don't. Are we gonna game plan or anything? It's like, no, we're just gonna wing it. Yeah, I think that that's that's the funnest. It's the most organic. Right. Um, Plus, I know, I know you obviously. Um, what's the dates for Cyan? Uh, March first, second, third. Awesome. Yeah. Um. And I know, obviously, running shows got you hella busy, but dude, if we have any opportunity to get your time for just a little bit during that show, that would be awesome to. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. So that's the beauty of it is I basically the last show I just kind of walked around. Yeah. My feet hurt for three weeks afterwards. So this year I have a scooter. I'm gonna oh, be I'm gonna be Troy Temple. That's ne- dope. Ne- 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 ne. That's who, dope. who does that? Someone there's someone Troy. like Troy Temple. Oh, yeah, he's the owner of Villain Arts. That's yeah. right. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he dude every show he's got this little fucking scooter and he just zooms all over the place. And I was watching him do it. And I was like, I wonder why he does that. Like, is it because it's just he does it every weekend? Then I hosted my own show. And I said, that's fucking why he does it. Because, dude, I wore comfortable shoes and everything. I was sore for three. I was like, dude, I need to sit down. Yeah. I can't stand on my feet. It hurt so bad. Oh, dude, yeah. I saw you everywhere. Yeah. You was all over that bitch dude, last got, time. I mean, I was making sure everybody was happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to check on your artists. Make sure everybody's doing good. Because if you need anything, I'll fucking get it. I'm not... I run a show, but I'm not fucking special. I'm not yeah. awesome. I'm not above anybody. What do you need? You need a sandwich? I got you. I'll run a Burger King for you. You know yeah. what I mean? I did that with Evergreen when I went up there for my first time ever. I showed up four days early and I was like, what do you need me to do? Because yeah. it was when they're like, they were in like their second year. And I was like, I'll, sh- I'll go get food. I'll carry, I'll fucking set up. I'm a grunt. Use me. And they, that was like, they said, dude, nobody does that. Everybody shows up with like an entourage now and they look at me. I'm on Ink Master. I'm fucking special. And I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate those artists that show up to help yeah. and they're genuine, you know? So I was like, did I own a studio? I ain't fucking special. I don't know. Well, that's mm-hmm. valued, man. It's very much appreciated. And obviously I think everyone that meets, you can tell we heard so many good things about you just from Dylan and obviously being in the, you know, the Dayton community and whatnot, people know you, you know, and it's a yeah. uh, sweetheart. Yeah. Um, but, dude, yeah, anyone that's listening to this, if you're in the area or maybe you're fucking not, you're going to come out to a uh, little Fly Dayton out. area. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be an awesome fucking show. There was a lot of hard hitters last year. The, the competitions were dope. We had, like, what was it, um, um, fucking Zach Perry and... Dude, Zach Perry. Uh, I never even heard of him before my show. Holy shit, yeah. that guy. They did that mix-up piece last Alejandro. year. Jordy uh, Alejandro. You're talking about um, Antoine Davis. Yes, Antoine Davis is a bad motherfucker. Jordy. Uh, he was on Ink Master. Jordy's amazing. His work, he does that crazy surrealism that you're like, where the fuck did you come up with that? <laughs> right. Oh, and it's awesome. It's like well executed. I never even dude. until you see, you see the shit that he can't get out of his head, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> it's like I wish you could. There will be a day I guarantee where they can stick something on our heads and pull our visions right up on a board, and we're gonna be like, fuck. <laughs> I was thinking of that. That's what I was trying to get on paper all this right, time. Right. It's going to happen one day. And I'm going to go pay a visit to Jesse Smith and be right. like, we can do it now, man. We Let's got, see it. We got somewhere to go real quick. Yeah. yeah. Right. But uh, March 1st through the 3rd, that's Friday through Sunday, right? Yeah. Right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Dayton, Ohio, or something. You said the Montgomery that. County Fairgrounds? Yeah. It's, so it's, a, it's, it's called the Fairgrounds of Montgomery County. Gotcha. And it's over on Infirmary Road, which is the new buildings, whereas a lot of people who are from Dayton still think it's by the by Brown hospital. Brown Street and how, the yeah. hospital. So, and we do have um, some hotel blocks available. Like, all that stuff's going to be posted. Um, right now, I'm letting all the artists have first dibs so they get locked if they need a hotel. And then we're going to make it public for whatever we have left over. Okay. And where's the best place to... Uh, just find out about the show. The cyan tattoo.com. Okay. So cyan is C Y A N, uh, C Y A N dot tattoo.com. And, uh, Instagram is where I, is I usually post most everything from Instagram. It goes to Facebook. We don't have a, um, TikTok or any of that yet. Awesome. It's hard to maintain social yeah. media. I need a, I need a copy of you. <laughs> I need a Tim. Yeah. yeah. That joke. Dude. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh long, but I'll have all the links and stuff to that below. So they can okay. check all that shit out. But, Sweet. uh, 
Yeah, dude, it's gonna be a fucking hard hitting show. It was wonderful the last time we went. Thank you, you killed man. it. And uh, believe it or not, I'll give I'll give this information. Cyan, the first year we lost money, like a lot of money. Yeah, no, um, I, I believe it, man. <laughs> yeah, COVID, fucking well, motherfucker. So I had a full plan. So I went to Riley and Josh from Evergreen. They're, they're the owners of Evergreen. And for two years in a row, I was driving them crazy, asking them all the questions I could get. So I was like, what can I do to make sure my show runs successful? And they gave me a bunch. They gave me a map. Riley literally drew a map of like, this is what you got to do. So I, I started executing. <clears throat> and then COVID hit yeah. and fucked everything up and lost money. Now I had to pay out of my pocket on money. My partner had to come out a bunch of money out of his pocket. And then we ran a great show, which we both realized if somebody walked up to us and was like, hey, man. You give me $15,000 out of your pocket, but you're going to get this amazing feeling as a result of that money. I'd be like, here you go. You want 30000 Because I'll do that all over again tomorrow. Because we both realized, dude, we lost a lot of money, but it was fucking worth it. You know what I mean? That's why this year, we're not losing money. No. <laughs> this year, COVID didn't screw us up. All the budget's sitting right there. Everything made sense. We're not going to go over. We're, we're trying to just go at zero at the door. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to consider doing a convention. Look, but no. No. It is, <laughs> it is complicated. But, like, if you're zero at the door, which means all the money that people pay for their booth rent, all the advertising money, like, uh, you know, you get a sponsorship, all that money funds the show. The money, that way you're not trying to make a profit off the artists. I don't want to do that shit. I want the show to happen because of the artists. And then when the doors open, that's when we start making money. You know what I mean? If you're a zero at the door, every time somebody walks in that door, it's like, thank God we made 20 bucks. We made 20 bucks. That's where not giving away any of his secrets is usually pretty public. But Troy makes all of his money. He gets 15,000 people a show in a weekend. 20 yeah. bucks a pop yeah. or more. That's fucking six figures and then some in three days. Yeah. And I feel like you could just actually be excited to talk to someone at the show or to <laughs> see somebody at the show versus like... Oh, there's not enough of you yet or whatever, you know, <laughs> oh, right. you just yeah. see somebody and there's no other thought you have than just like excited to see you. Yeah. yeah. Stoked Thank to you see for you. coming. Right. I appreciate yeah. you. And I hope you have a great time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Whereas like, damn, you didn't bring 30 friends with you, man. Come on. <laughs> right, right, right. That's right. how I was feeling all that show. <laughs> uh, everybody said they had a great time and I got a, I got great feedback. Not one person complained last show. And I was yeah. super pumped because I was so worried. I was like, there's not enough people in this building. Yeah. Like I need these artists busy. And I feel bad when, like, uh, there's a couple artists I saw that didn't tattoo, like, hardly at all. Yeah. They were local, though. So I almost, I almost was kind of like, damn, you didn't tattoo. You ain't got four customers you can get in the door here. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, damn. Yeah. Uh, but no, this year, I think it'll be way better. We've got this kind of stuff happening a lot more. It's the second year. It's in March. It's at the end of Cabin Fever. You know what I mean? Right. March 1st is like, dude, I'm waiting to get out of my goddamn yeah. house. So. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I think yeah, you know. I was nervous fun. last year. This year, I'm excited. I'm like, this is gonna be the year. It's awesome. And then every man. year after, of course. Yeah, Hell it's yeah. good stuff, man. I know we're excited to attend it. The the artists that are going from the studio, they're pumped on it. Um, yeah. So, what do you think? You want to jump into the Patreon? Yeah, let me do some closing stuff. Uh, you know, the boring, good old, good old. You guys, of course, you can find all the links to uh, Josh's stuff. Uh, real quick, where can they find you and your shop at on Instagram? You know, oh, um, like the Instagram for the studio is Modified Skin Tattoos. Yeah, what about at, yours? Mine is at Josh Wiley Art. Nice, awesome. Yeah. And if yeah, you're gonna throw links, or I don't know what you do. I don't see a lot of graphics on your guys' stuff. You don't put it on the actual video. No, nah, it'll probably be in the in caption the, below, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, just in the yeah. description below. So check all that out. Of course, <clears> as always, you can find our stuff below. Uh, I think. I, just, I think this is like 13 episodes in or 14. So you guys should be able to know where our shit's at by now. Um, but uh, really appreciate you having you on the show, you know, driving out to see us. The weather's not great outside right now. and I know not, It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Thank God. But no, thank you right. guys for having me. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And I was pumped. I've been thinking about this all month. I've been like, yeah, it's going to be fun. I've never done this before. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's man. It's exciting. That's cool. We've gotten really good responses so far. And, uh, I feel like the people we brought on have just had so much value for the show. Yeah. And of course, there was some things that we didn't get to touch on. But uh, but without further ado, appreciate you guys for showing up to another episode of More Than Tattoos. And we'll catch you at the next episode. Peace.